Hello friends, welcome to Diffusion Weekly, where I cover topics I didn't have time to make videos about this week. First, I'm going to go over something that I think is most applicable to the most people. So for anyone who's used any of Adobe's products, Adobe just made a huge step forward by releasing Photoshop Generative Fill, which basically is uh, salvaging Photoshop in a post-AI age and turning it into a highly specialized, fast, and pretty easy to use in painting tool. Ironically, now a lot of workflows you see in Photoshop after the advent of generative fill are pretty much using generative fill to skip a lot of uh, otherwise steps you'd have to use like a graphical tablet for. And then it's just retouching the output and blending outputs of generative fill. And generative fill, I mean, it replaces half of the tool sets you, you can actually click on. Also worth noting, for me is how quick this model works, how accurate it is, and how it works at a pretty high resolution. You get three like versions of every one of these fills. And for me using it with Adobe Creative Cloud, I found it pretty useful. I was impressed with the speed because it really reminded me of what it was like to use mid-journey in the early days when you could make, you know, an image every 12 seconds, sometimes even faster. And for me, like that's what got me hooked on a lot of these tools was just how addicting it was to just click through mid-journey for like three hours at a time when this was a new and novel thing. So very cool. If you have Adobe Creative Cloud, I highly recommend uh, checking this out. So moving on, um, this is one of the more impressive academic things I think I've seen in a long time in AI. And uh, it's not something that's been just showing up this week. The first time we saw models that were called MindViz models, so models that can take image of the brain or an fMRI and um, EKG combination, and then turn that into what it thinks you're seeing. Seen some of those before, even as early as November of last year. And what's interesting is um, a lot of people think that these models can generate any image out of thin air. And to clarify, this actually isn't the case. Um, the output depends heavily on what the image or fMRI combination of the model was trained on. So for instance, like a lot of these sometimes just see animals and not really surprising that the reason that is, is the model was mostly trained on images of animals or, or the psychology studies that these were based on uh, only used examples of humans and animals. Nonetheless, uh, this is an incredible achievement, both uh, medically and in the AI space. Which brings us the model that we're talking about today, which is called Mind Video, which is able to reproduce videos from brainwaves, uh, literally. I hope someone invests a ton of money into this and then doesn't give it to the government so they can read our thoughts and see what we're seeing and see uh, what our Ron think is in uh, in real time. Yeah, very cool project. Um, and as always, the link is in the description below. Meta has been releasing tons of content uh, and tons of new tools related to AI, uh, as you know, if you probably watch this channel. Uh, the coolest thing that they released this week was uh, something they call MMS, or Massively Multilingual Speech by Meta AI. Their MMS model is able to transcribe and generate speech for over a thousand languages, uh, compared to OpenAI's Whisper models, which are mostly able to do English well. The big thing with MMS is it covers a data set that's 11 times larger, which equates to 11x the number of languages it can actually do, uh, and most importantly, with half of the error rate. And what's crazy is, at least for English, Whisper is pretty much perfect. There are sometimes it'll miss things, but the idea that MMS is twice as accurate and has more language capability, I think that's really cool. Some interesting takeaways from this were that um, some languages are actually more compute intensive than others. And I think that's kind of interesting because literally like some languages take more carbon to transcode and run through a GPU than others, which is sort of a funny thing to think about. Another big one, uh, text to nerf. Um, so we've seen a few of these. The difference with this, and the, the name is kind of boring um, and hides this for some reason, but uh, the big thing with this is um, this is a text-driven 3D scene generation tool that happens to use neural radiance fields. So this is generating entire scenes, not just objects like we've seen before. Uh, apparently text to nerf combines the neural radiance field and a pre-trained text-to-image diffusion model to generate these view consistent indoor and outdoor 3D scenes. As with all of these, um, the initial input is going into a clip from a natural language description. So some of the prompts they have here are um, a bedroom with a desk, a clean kitchen, a dog playing on the lawn, and bonsai on the table. So going anywhere from kind of a benign indoor scene to a more complex scene like a kitchen to a very complex outdoor scene where there's potentially lots of context and back to something pretty simple we've seen before like a bonze on the table. Another really cool model that's hopping into sort of multimodal aspect is Cody, any to any generation via composable diffusion. So text to nerf is cool, but what if we could combine this with other modalities? Um, Cody is pretty much what does that. 
and it's a framework for any-to-any -any generation via composable diffusion, which is kind of a new term that they're using to describe this. You can generate language images, videos, and audio from any combination of the former. It's similar to Meta's model, except there's less of an interest on movement, which is interesting because I would like to think that Meta's model probably came from some kind of a robotic spaces before. Another really cool one was control of video, which is controllable text to video generation with diffusion models. And for me, I think this is more interesting than like runway gen 1 or gen 2 video production because this offers uh, much more fine-tuned control and is much more texture aware there's a video of a camel that's kind of funny because it's able to understand that if a camel is walking around in the snow it might want to have a blanket on or have its humps covered with these like hat things so video to video output so far is, is always pretty hard right now it's hard to get right because of flickering coherency is kind of hard to get right Gen 1 by Runway ML is what I consider state of the art right now. Gen 2 is pretty cool. It can do different things, but it's in terms of quality and coherence, not quite as good. Uh, the latest controller video implementation, otherwise known as um, Video Control Net, comes pretty close and introduces the ability to, um, like with other control net models, guide video generation using depth maps, canny and HED detection as well as text descriptors. Runway is great, but it lacks certain context and controller video comes in right away to make it work almost perfectly. Something else that I'm working on a video for is something called Blotter Stream. So it's a never ending AI music video um, that I think is also cool just for generating what I call visual entropy. And for those of you who don't know, the Dragon model is now available in multiple versions in unofficial implementations. They're pretty limited in terms of what they can do with how large the images are and what kind of images you can give them. But I think it's cool to see that um, papers are being written well enough now that people on their own can actually develop implementations, post them on Hugging Face, and then see how they work. As always, um, all the links to everything we talked about today are in the description. If there's something you missed that you think is cool, uh, maybe that you want us to make a video about, drop it in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. But uh, as always, I hope you learned something and we'll see you guys next week.